Good evening, everyone. So, well, this isn't the first video I've recorded about this radio, but this is the first one you're going to see. This is the XH Data D219. This is fairly new and has gotten a lot of really positive reviews from people, well, all over the world. I thought it might be interesting because it's very inexpensive. It's really smart looking. The ergonomics are excellent. And I thought it might be a nice alternative to a similar XH data the, uh, that I already have, the D328, which you'll have seen because I've compared this recently with my R909. Now this radio is excellent. Doesn't overload, works quite well. It's not a magic performer, but it will generally outperform an analog radio like the 909 in, you know, sort of everyday use. And I assumed that this would be uh, a AA powered version of the same thing. This one uses one of those flat pack batteries, Nokia style batteries. And so I thought that this video would be very straightforward. We'd compare this radio to that radio say they were more or less the same and call it a day. But they're not. And I found this very radio very frustrating. I have now figured out what I think is going on. I have a possible test that may demonstrate that that's the issue. And I think that this might explain beyond the idea that this is a flawed individual copy of the radio which seems fairly unlikely in something that has got to be quite simple internally. But barring that, I think I understand what's going on with it and I understand why people in certain locations are finding this to be an excellent radio and why in my particular location, I find it to be fairly questionable. So let me show you its behavior and then I'll talk about it a little bit more. So we'll, I should say the ergonomics on this are great. The power switch is on top. The headphone jack, DC in five volts, which is nice, which means you can drive it with USB power supply. Oh, I'm not used to the camera in this setup, uh, but it's center negative, just so you know. You'll have to make up or get, get a cable for that purpose. Um, on the side, you've got volume and tuning. And in the back, you've got a stand and uh, AA batteries, two AA's. So uh, what I like about it ergonomically is that you've got little indicators here for the band. So in front, you can see the band, you can see your tuning. You don't have to, like in the 909, look at the top of the radio to figure out what the band is. So this is much improved ergonomics, similar to what the uh, uh, D328 does. And very tasteful colors um, for a radio that is essentially about $10 US or less even. Um, it's like, it looks fantastic, right? Okay, so let's put up the antenna. We're indoors, I'm in Toronto. It is just 11 o'clock at night here. It's Eastern Daylight, so we're minus four from UTC. So we'll put this on the band two here, which is gonna give us the 49 meter band. Get these other radios out of the way behind. We'll turn this on. Turn down the volume, or I'm turning up the volume, and we'll just scan through the band. I'm just going to go very quickly because what I'm trying to show. should be apparent already. 
it's tremendously overloaded. Now mind you, there's no external antenna. There's no external antenna, but the area is overloading. That band is full at this time of night. We've got every kind of preacher. We've got Cuba. We've got the anti-Castro Cuban stuff from the U.S. We've got Radio Japan from uh, rebroadcast from France ought to be on there. There's there it it should be pretty busy. Nothing. So it's overloading. So what I'm going to do is we're looking at the antenna. I'm going to put the antenna down almost all the way. Now, let's try that again. Okay. Won't be much of the center of the car. Even better if you put the antenna down all the way. The big one. God gave the commands of the way to set up the tabernacle. We don't. Which is went through from east and you travel west. People, when that's what they're, that's what they try to get for free. Sounds like it's over a little bit. Anyway, you get the point. No antenna, radio doesn't overload, and it's sensitive and seems to be pulling in pretty well exactly what you'd expect it to pull in. Um, we can compare with radio of similar design. We'll put the antenna up on this one. We'll also put it to band two. We'll turn it over to the edge. Try to get this in frame this time. Nope. I have it on MP3 player. All right. Not much of this end of the dial. We should be getting to it soon. Unquote, settled, unquote. Like it was... You can call that accident if you want. Johnny's a righteous man. He's been so good to... And there's Radio Japan. That's from Easy to France. I think I hear that Radio Havana Cuba on the other exit data. And that's probably about all we're going to see. So, the performance with this, with its antenna down, comes close to this with its antenna up. Very odd, right? So I think they've increased the sensitivity of this receiver to the extent that here where I am in Toronto, it's overloading. And why is it overloading? Well, this direction facing uh, away from the camera is pretty well straight west and there is a uh, there's a patio door out onto my roof deck and that is where most of these shortwave signals are coming from well through that window anyway but behind me in essentially a straight line 
is the CN Tower and downtown Toronto. And I think what's going on is that this thing is getting overloaded with FM. Now, I knew that this radio was fairly susceptible to FM breakthrough, and especially in the upper bands, it's, it's all over the place. And that's true with this one as well. But this one in particular in the lower bands seems sensitive enough that it's drowning out its ability to pick out anything. Now, I live in downtown Toronto, but my office is in the suburbs. So this radio is gonna come out with me on a trip to the office later this week. And we're gonna try some daytime shortwave and see how it performs a little farther away from any transmitter. I should say they're also powerful AM transmitters, 50,000 watt AM transmitters. Um, almost within line of sight here as well. So lots and lots of signals poking around. Um, I will say generally for FM reception, I find most analog receivers do better if you leave the antennas down. Uh, most recent digital uh, FM receivers, this included, do fine with the antenna up. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so that's kind of where I am with the D219. I can't recommend you buy it, not yet. And certainly not if you live in an urban area surrounded by powerful FM transmitters. But if you don't, it, I mean, it's got some promise of being very sensitive, just not very resistant to background noise. And I would assume I mean, I'm guessing it's FM, but it could be just that the noise floor in this urban environment, which is noisy as anything, uh, just the noise floor is so high that this thing gets swamped out. It's possible. I have collected it to my MLA external antenna, and it actually does a little better on that than, than it does with its own antenna in this room. And I... It, now I kind of think that's because the MLA uh, uh, 30 plus an antenna has almost no FM reception capability at all. So it may be essentially the, the amplifier it doesn't have, it doesn't do anything above 50 megahertz really. So, uh, so it may be that it's effectively acting as a band filter and shielding this thing from the FM, which is getting through its own antenna. It's a very odd thing though, really very odd. Anyhow, I hope that was interesting. There will be a follow-up video with this radio again once I've got it out of the office and we'll see where that takes us. Thanks a lot.